across. So, so now instead of accelerating the electrons, what are we doing? We're decelerating them, correct? Yeah. But couldn't some of them be going fast enough that they make it there anyway? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And, and, and so depending on this voltage, can't you measure how fast they're going somehow in some clever way? Yeah. Or ultimately you can measure their kinetic energy. So let's, let's make a model here, a conceptual model, right? Is let's have uh, electrons, they're all here at some level, energy level, right? There is a certain amount of energy you have to put in to even get them loose from the surface of the metal, something called the work function, right? And once you've gotten them up this, whatever this work function is, right, they then go through a vacuum. Here's the vacuum of it, right, up to some potential. And this potential is called the stopping potential. So I'm treating here, in this case, vertical elevation as voltage, and this is a familiar analogy, this, I hope it is, yes? Okay, that we can talk about voltage as like, remember the contour lines, a sheet of rubber, all of this stuff, right? Okay. Horizontal is just displacement off of the plate, right? Is our, right? So vertical is energy and horizontal is whatever, right? This is the surface of the metal, right? So this is called the work function. So if, if, we, sh if we have this plate, if we're shining uh, photons down on here, right? Some of them, if we do very low energetic ones, the marbles roll part way up here, but don't make it all the way out, and then they never leave the metal. They just get excited on the metal. They're like, ooh, I like that. I like the photon, but I will not leave my home. Yeah. Why, why, by the way, does it take energy to remove an electron from the metal? Is it attracted to the positive nuclei of the atom? Yeah, yeah. Yes, there we go, right? Okay, yeah. So at some energies, at some low light energies, right, these electrons can't even leave the metal. They just sort of get all excited and get a higher energy on the metal, but they don't leave it, right? But if we give them an energy, if the photons have sufficient energy, they start to roll up this inclined plane to some distance. Now, think like one of those popcorn poppers or something like that, or a random shaking of the balls because ooh, that was a bad thing to say. I think once you say that, it's all over. But anyway, okay. Is it recording? Oh, it is. Okay. Think of a random shaking of the, okay. Let's go back. Okay, but they don't all have the same energy. They don't have all the same energy. Are we picturing this? They have widely disparate energies because the photons coming in, even if they all have the same energy, it's not a 100% efficient process of giving the energy to the electrons, right? Some random amount is lost into heat or something like that, right? And so, but some of them, there's a maximum height that the fastest ones can get to, yes? All we have to do is lower our stopping potential. We just lower it, lower it, lower it, lower it, lower it, until some do come across. How do we know that? How do we know that some are making it across? Can we detect them on the ammeter? Yeah, ammeters detect current. These are electrons, they're electrical current, right? So we turn the voltage either up or down, right? And we find the highest voltage by which, for which the electrons can still make it across, above which they can no longer make it across. This voltage is called the stopping potential. Why is it called that? Because it stops, it's the potential, it stops all electrons, yeah? So basically you just adjust this voltage and you measure what that maximum velocity is. Or not the maximum velocity, but maximum energy. Isn't that, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah? So at very low voltages, all, a lot of them make it up. You keep turning it up, you keep turning it up. Fewer and fewer make it across. Finally, you get one, the highest voltage that you can get so that you can stop all of them. Yeah? That's the stopping potential. And you've measured it. Isn't that clever? Einstein thinks of this. He thinks of this way of measuring the energies. And of course, if the energy of those photons depends on the brightness of the light, wave theory rules in this situation. If it depends on the color of the light, Einstein's right. And of course, Millikan did it, and it depends on the color. And he said in his conclusion to his paper, the only theory left standing is Einstein's, and we know that's not right. So somebody please give me a theory of light, right? This is in his 1913 conclusion. By 1931, he changed that. He went back in his paper, changed it, and said the results confirmed the now widely accepted uh, uh, crepuscular theory of light, photon theory of light, proposed by Albert Einstein in uh, when it, uh, 1905 or whenever it was, right? That's kind of fun. So here is the math that you have to do. The concept is much, much harder than the math, okay? The math is like this, okay? The math is that photon energy... Okay, let me write it up here. Photon energy... turns into work to remove the electron 
plus the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. Photoelectrons are just electrons ejected by photons, right? Okay. This is known also as This is known also as the work function. Okay. Now, here is a very cool thing. We always do these problems in electron volts. We always do them in electron volts, and here is why. Let's suppose that your stopping potential is, say, 7 volts. 7 volts of potential is enough to keep the electrons from going across. This means, by the way, that the maximum energy of the electrons is what in electron volts? Don't think too hard. Is it seven electron volts? Yeah. Yes. An electron with sufficient kinetic energy to, 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 to coast through, to decelerate, to be decelerated through seven volts of potential has seven electron volts of energy. Yes? Okay, that's the definition of electron volts, right? So if it has sufficient energy to coast through seven volts, it's got seven electron volts, right? So let's suppose that that is our, our energy, right? Yeah. Right? And, and then we say this two different ways. We say they have a kinetic energy of seven electron volts. We also say the stopping potential is seven volts. It's the same thing. Let's suppose the work function is three electron volts. What energy did the photon have to have? Oh, you guys are so smart. This part is not too hard, right? Understanding how this whole thing works conceptually is hard. The math is not so hard. Let's suppose I have a 13 electron volt photon. The, the work function is 4 electron volts. What's going to be the stopping potential? Well, the energy is going to be 9 electron volts, so the stopping potential is 9 volts, right? So if they say stopping potential, give them volts. If they say what is the energy in electron volts, say electron volts, right? Now, the book contrives a few problems where they give you this in joules. But nobody but nobody does them in joules. They always do them in electron volts because work functions themselves are looked up in electron volts. And the, the kinetic energy is measured directly in electron volts. So always do these in electron volts. Yeah? You just have to convert everything. Right? But it still works. Yeah? Okay, so I think we have... These are the formulas in the data packet. Strangely strangely not terribly helpful, right? But I don't know how you write this as a formula, right? And then here's our first example. Uh, it must be that um, the work function, I think that's the Greek letter phi, isn't it? So it's kind of like the fee you pay to remove an electron. I tried, I really did try, right? Okay, and then it says, doesn't it say the stopping potential is 7.35 volts, is that what it says? And the question is, what is the wavelength? Right? So we set this thing up. It's not, the first part of this one's not going to be terribly difficult. Okay? If the stopping potential is 7.35 volts, isn't our, isn't our energy 7.35 electron volts? If this is 3.25 electron volts, right? What is this energy here? This is like the hard part for me. Is it 10.60? Yes, it is. Right? So now, that's step one. Step two is really very, very difficult. We've got to do what we've already done, right? And we've got to turn electron volts back into like nanometers, right? Okay? So this looks like this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go 10.60 times 1.602 e minus 19. And this is joules per electron volt. All right? So I'm going to turn that into 10.6. So I'm turning it into joules is what I'm doing right now. Right, so now we've got joules. You're going to get a little tighter on the board here. Right, and then what's the next step? The next step is to find the wavelength. So I'm going to use E equals HC over lambda. Right, so lambda is HC over E. Yeah, so this, we've already done this, haven't we? But let's keep doing it because we'll have an example, right? 6.626. So if you can't do this, why, you know, that's sad because now this problem is unnecessarily difficult, right? 
So that times 3.5.